This offseason has consisted of a lot of money. Players are more expensive than ever right now, which is causing teams to look at the trade market. More than anything, teams want starting pitching, and Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery are both expensive. That's why a team would rather trade for pitching. Or even look at the lineup. Teams don't want to go ahead and sign Cody Ballinger or even Matt Chapman. People want to make trades instead of committing a ton of money to one player. So starting off this list, we have Mitch Keller. This one is shocking because the Pirates really want to be competitive. They want to win games and Mitch Keller is their best pitcher. But as we know, they're also one of the cheapest teams in all of baseball and any time that they can save money, they will do it. Reports in the past really indicated that they wouldn't trade Keller. Until the other day, we got a report saying that he could be traded. He currently has two years left of team control, so you know, he has a little bit. But reports have said that if he does not agree to an extension, that he could be traded. Mitch Keller has had a very inconsistent career so far. Sometimes he's really good, other times he's also really bad. Pittsburgh might choose to move on from him right now when his trade value is at his highest. They could get a lot for him, I understand that. Teams are really desperate right now. But I do believe that the Pirates have been in a rebuild for just such a long time, it's time to start winning, and you have to do that with the starting pitching. Don't go and trade away Mitch Keller, it would be a stupid decision. But if you are searching for starting pitching, I would believe that Keller is going to be kind of a shocking one, but one that you could land on your team. Next up, we have Masataki Yoshida. Now, Boston has been cheap as an ownership over the last few years. Ever since they won the World Series in 2018, the ownership has just shown no care in the world. In fact, the Red Sox are really their last priority as far as the ownership. So they're looking to go and cut more payroll right now so that they could sign free agents. At least that's what they claim. Regardless of barely even touching 200 mil, they are still looking to cut more payroll. Masataki Yoshida was of course signed last year on a 5 year deal worth 105 mil. In his rookie year, he worked out really well, putting together a 289 batting average and 15 homers. By the way, he led the team in batting average. Offensively, he was great. For a first year, he displayed a solid offense. The defense on the other hand, yes, it was rough, we all know that. Reports have came out saying that they are listening to trade offers with Yoshida. It would be because of salary issues, therefore the team who lands Yoshida really wouldn't have to give up too much. All they would have to do is take on his salary. But I do believe for a big market team like Boston, this would be a dumb move. He's a good player who displayed a lot last year. Not to mention, how do you expect to be able to land future Japanese free agents? Oh wait, guess what? You wouldn't be able to because they see you trade Yoshida after one year? This would just be an ugly move for the Boston Red Sox. Moving on, we have Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa doesn't want to rebuild, but they definitely want to retool for 2024. This means trading talent, getting back young stars in return. Looking at their 2023 team, Harold Ramirez is a prime trade target. He's only 29 years old. He put together the best season of his career, a 313 batting average, 12 homers, 800 OPS. This was a peak season for Ramirez and the Rays. Tampa wants to move on because he is at his peak value. He only has two years left of team control. They won't extend him, so trading him is their best option. They have young players who are under team control, but for a team that appears to be injury ridden in 2024, I understand why they would make the trade getting rid of Ramirez, go and bring in prospects, go and bring in more young players, and continue the stage of the retool for Tampa. Next up, we have Framber Valdez. Now, Valdez is very interesting because the Astros shouldn't move on from him at all. Again, I understand he has two years of team control left, but he's been so, so good in every single season since 2020. The consistency that he's had isn't something that you could go and find from anyone. I think that Houston knows that. They aren't shopping him, but they are listening to trade offers right now. And I think if that there is a team that can't land starting pitching like Boston or the Orioles, maybe even the Angels, you could see a Framber Valdez trade. Simply because they will overpay for a pitcher and the return for Houston would be real nice. But at the same time, you would be losing Framber Valdez. And that's why I think this trade would be so shocking. The man that you have to give up is Framber. 
that would just be a lot. Even though you get prospects in return, I doubt that those prospects would be worth it. Going back into Boston for this next one, we have Trevor Story. Another guy who apparently has trade interest, and this one would be flat out just stupid for Boston. I get it, you're trying to save money, but the Red Sox are in need of a shortstop. Last year, they had Kike Hernandez at shortstop, and let's just say that experiment did not go over too well, as he did lead the MLB in errors. So why go ahead and create another hole for yourself? Story gives you top of the line defense. This was a big problem for them last year. If he's going to be healthy going into 2024, there is no reason to give him up. Yeah, he's coming off multiple down years, but this is also why you shouldn't trade him. He has no trade value right now. All you could do is go and shed some payroll. Trading him right now would be silly, and that would be a failure from the Red Sox ownership. Now, going back into starting pitching, we have Jesus Lazardo. I know what you think, but I've heard him all offseason that he could be traded. How is this one shocking? I would say that this one is because the Marlins should not trade him. He just had a breakout year in 2023, plus he's under team control for three more years. They need all the pitching that they can get, and keep in mind, Alcantara is out all of 2024. They need an ace-level pitcher. If you plan on being competitive, an ace-level pitcher is what they need. Lazardo can be that guy, and I do believe that his 2023 showed exactly that. Now, if they did trade him, they'd be getting a very good piece in a trade, so I think that's why this trade could happen. The piece that they could get get in return. That's the upside with it, but I believe that there is more downside than there is upside with that. Moving on, we have Hassan Kim. Kim entered MLB back in 2021. This guy broke out big in 2023. I mean, there's no way he should be traded, but reports have indicated that there is a chance he is. He brings so much value to this team. Offensively, good player for the Padres. Defensively, he's a great player. He's also only 28 years old and is under a very cheap deal for 2024. This guy is really good. He's someone I would hang on to. The Padres' reasoning for wanting to move on makes sense. He's coming off of the best season of his entire career. Career. He's hitting free agency after 2024 as well. I understand why they would do it, but I also don't think it's smart to go and trade such an important piece of the team. Next up, we have Toronto. Now, Toronto could be moving on from someone big. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Coming up in 2019, he's always been viewed as a big deal. He had a breakout 2021, hitting 311 and putting up 48 homers. This guy was 22 years old doing what he did. In 2022, he was a good player, but it definitely wasn't as good as his 2021. 2023, he didn't even put up an 800 OPS. Regardless of his down year, I think it's fair to say that they should definitely build around him. But so far this offseason, they missed out on Juan Soto. Shohei Otani, and more. If they miss out on Cody Bellinger next, I really do wonder what the plan would be from there. Ken Rosenthal reported earlier in this offseason that they could trade Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He becomes a free agent in 2026, and he needs to be extended immediately. He's still only 24 years old, so there is a lot of room to grow, and that's why a trade would be so shocking. But they look at his 2023, they say, okay, he struck out a lot, he had a lot of poor at-bats, and we still can get trade value for him, why don't we go and make the move? Again, I did disagree with it, but it could happen. We'll see. But this is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, and peace out.